I'm sorry, what did I call? What did I call? What did I call? Oh, you reached the National Domestic Violence Hotline. I'm sorry, what was your name? Sam. Yes, I'm in a domestic violence crisis and I'm just tired. I have not been heard for years. I just, how much more must one uh, human being endure? My abuser brings his abuse everywhere I'm at, even restaurants and churches. And nothing is done year after year. Each place I go is covering for crimes um, and uh, dep- scheming to deprive me of systems repetitively over and over and nothing is done. I have my freedom has been taken 20 times and I did not even know if I was going to live through those experiences. There's been hidden runs, ignored identity theft, all kinds of torture repeatedly ignored year after year. So the shelter has put, multiple shelters have schemed to put me out. The shelter's pretending like, because I got the wrong time from this appointment, I, I'm discharged from the whole shelter. And East Fifth, I've got put out of Austin Street Shelter because I asked for a cookie in the food line for looking both ways to see if someone was coming and for getting shoved and for getting up in the middle of the night putting on makeup when everyone was asleep because they harassed me, terrorized me when I put on makeup. And nothing's done year after year. I don't know what to do. Gotcha. Thank you so much for sharing that with me. It sounds like it's been, you know, a very horrible journey uh, with uh, going through these domestic violence shelters. Um, oh, I haven't been to a domestic violence. This is a homeless shelter. I haven't been able to get in a domestic violence shelter. That's why I'm trying today. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Um, Yes, I was experiencing homelessness due to the abuse. The police, each time I get an environment, they scheme to take it away with false arrest on blatant lies. So each time I build myself up, the government interrupts it with schemes. So now I've been here at this shelter, it's a homeless shelter, but I had my own bed and it was a little bit more stability than I have been allowed in a long time. And now it's interrupted again. This has been a repetitive pattern, and nothing has been done. Gotcha. Thank you. Are you still experiencing abuse from your partner? Yes. I, he is, I believe that he's the reason why the shelter discharged me and why I haven't been able to get help to flee a domestic violence situation that involves the government. They just completely derail my life year after year with no consequences. Yeah, he's be abusing me through the government. That's what I communicated. Gotcha. Okay. Um, you asking me what I need? Yes. What resources were you looking? I for like to get shelter and some help. Shelter and help. Okay. What kind of help were you needing aside from shelter? Any kind of help that an advocate could uh, um, direct me towards. I'm calling from Texas, and I'm in Fort Worth right now. I can relocate. Um, I thought that they had programs for transit or transportation. Um, I can see if your area does give me work right here. Emergency transportation? They won't help me. I probably have to get out of this location. None of the shelters there are. I'm blackballed from all the shelters in Fort Worth and Dallas. Hold on, let me get this call. Yes, so I like to get outside of Dallas and Fort Worth because they're all um, controlled and deny me assistance. Okay, yeah, do you mind just giving me a city of reference? Anyone that can help. I've had to endure this years. I don't know. I have no clue. I'd like some direction if possible. Um, okay. Wake up. I think Waco's controlled, but okay. okay well, I don't know. I'm not. I don't know what is what cities you have. If you won't tell me, then how am I going to know? So our other our database is a national database. So really, any you can give me any city like Austin, San 
but I don't know that I don't know why you would stop um, giving me the surrounding cities that you've done years, but played games. I don't know why the National Domestic Violence Hotline would change its mind and gave me surrounding locations before, and then stop why you would stop. Do you have any in Garland? Do you have any in Garland? Not Hope's door. Do you have any in Rockwall? I'm sorry. If you'd like, I can expand search from Fort Worth out 50 miles. I can even go even further. Yes, that would be better. Thank you. Johnson County Family Crisis Center. That's for domestic violence? Yes. In Johnson County, what? Johnson County Family Crisis Center. Okay, can you connect me with them? Yes, I do. Can you make sure they have space before you connect me? I'm sorry? Can you make sure they have space before you connect me? Yeah, I can reach out to them. Okay. Okay, what's the number? 800-848-3206. Okay. You have, did you find out if they had space? Did you find out if they had space? How? Yeah, so like I said, they wouldn't tell me if they had space available. They were asking to screen you first. I don't have rights, ma'am. I'm just... Would you like me to transfer you over to them okay. so that they can screen you? Yeah, I'll go ahead. They've all been full six years. Alrighty, I have the caller on the line. I just want to make sure that you guys can hear each other before I transfer, before I do a full transfer. Oh. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? And what's your name? It's yes. Kiana. I haven't been heard a very long time. I don't know how many more ways to beg for my life than get ignored. My abusers has been able to run the government, use them to torture me, violate me, deprive me of services, even uh, my rights, down to the degree of even keeping me away from my kids, unaddressed year after year. Hacking my phone, tortured, even at restaurants and church. And nothing has been repetitively done. I'm tired of every time I get something established or built up, someone robs me of it, free and clear from all charges and responsibility for, for their consequences or for their behavior. Repetitively unaddressed. So I don't know what to do. I just, the location I'm at discharge me, and that means that I won't uh, have a permanent bed here. So I have to see if they have availability in place to scheme. So I can't be there. So I don't know how that would work on having availability for beds. Because on a whim, my abuser can contact locations and have them conspire with his abuse. Where did you say you're being discharged from? I'd rather keep it, I'd like to keep it confidential. Shelter? It's a shelter. I call on the phone six years. I, I'm trying to communicate, ma'am. I've called on the phone six years, and people are, have been abusive and condescending and playing mind games. I go in person. Police have came to interrupt. Then places lie and say they're full year after year, leaving me in this sheer panic and terror. And I just had to make it a normal everyday life for me, being terrorized and terrified. I just had to live through it. When was the last incident? Today, when I think that they're scheming to discharge me because it, uh, other people don't get put out when they have the wrong time for an appointment. They just reschedule it. Okay. 
And then a car sped up like it was going to hit my friend deliberately. I've had it done to me multiple times as well. Someone I met online. I'm sorry? I never lived with him. He was someone I met online that stopped and did a lot of other things. August. August. You need to see if you have space available. Okay. Okay. Well, I've called six years, and they've never had any space available on my phone, ever. But I'm pushed, put, uh, pushed into a corner because, you know, what? I just don't, I don't want to keep living like this. I wish I had rights and something was done. So this is fruitless because six years at, all in Alaska and call it Canada didn't have space either and was abusive. I think it has something to do why the police department keeps interrupting me at my providers, giving me criminal trespasses, reporting what's going on with my phone. Maybe that's why you've been full six years as well as everywhere else I've called. I don't know what to do. No one's interrupted this. I'm sorry? Did you say you're getting criminal trespassing charges when you go to see your provider? Yeah, reporting that something's amiss with these calls. It doesn't make sense for everywhere to be full that I've called six years, even in Canada, Canada and Alaska. Forcing me to have to take this torture and abuse year after year. Every location I'm at, even with family, I'm not safe. You, you're saying safe haven again? That's the one I told you was controlled. And you keep talking about safe haven. No, I said Michigan Grand Area because they were full. And I haven't mentioned Safe Haven until just now. Oh, I thought someone mentioned, oh, the other person mentioned Safe Haven. Would you like the number to Michigan Grand Area? Okay. Okay, thank you. It's giving me problems calling it. That's how they scan the call. This is the domestic violence prevention in Texas for Canada. Yes, my name is Kiana Clark. I stayed there a while back. I'd like to know if I can come back. I'm blacklisted from all domestic violence organizations. And uh, when I went to go report my abuser, you put my stuff out. And I wasn't even there. I'm sorry? Are you located in Texas anymore? I'm homeless now. And that's why I'd like to know if I can come back. And like I was stating, what's your name? Are you in what's your name? Texas what's your name? My name is Jamie. I've already told you I'm homeless. Um, but I wanted to know if I can come there. Okay. Okay, what's the number? Okay. Four three five seven. Okay, thank you.
Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I must have wrote the wrong number down. Uh, I apologize. Um, yes, I'd like to know um, if you have space available. Well, for six years, you people have been full, and I've been getting tortured going over the story over and over again, and for every location to be full, so I don't know when I, if I need to wisen up and it be a stopping point from my point of view, because if for six years, I'm forced to go over the story over and over again, and every single time you're full, why would I keep repeating the same pattern? There would have to be a time where there's something wrong with me if I know darn well that you're going to be full after this call. After the, I give you the information, because it's happened six years. And first off, it's not normal to require someone to give you a story that's fleeing for, from abuse. And then you look and see if they have shelter afterwards. That's sadistic. I'm I think that that's how the system works in corruption because I don't think if a domestic violence organization really had integrity, they would have a woman repeat her story over and over again and not even check to see if they're full prior. It makes sense for you to check and see if you have space up front and not force a woman to go over her horrific, horrific story over and over again to get nowhere six years. But I, I I can't get law enforcement with these calls. I've been scammed out of money, got a YouTube channel, and nothing is repeatedly done over and over and over again. So what do I do? I'm just forced to talk to scammers over and over, deny me services six years. How do we get this to stop? Ma'am, I don't... I'll just go ahead and pause the uh, recording so they can hear you say you're full. Uh, you heard what a lot of the, what I was going through. The government's keeping me from services all over the place and hacking my phone and spoofing calls, having me speak with counterfeits, and I have had identity theft. And for six years, they have done everything that they could and uh, kept me away from being in a domestic violence location or getting any help. The, this kind of, this shelter has scheduled people's appointment over and over with no problem. When uh, you know they got wrong dates, but they put me out for getting the wrong time for an appointment. I'm so sorry that that's been happening to you. If my abusers control it and I'm getting put out, I don't know how safe that is, but he's been able to control all my environments with no accountability. Okay, well, do you want me to call someone to, to come help for you to get to you right now? Um, what kind of help? Like the police. Um, what are they going to do? I've called the police already. They never came. I've called the police already, and they never came. I'm so sorry. Okay, so how much longer before I know if you're full? Um, I'll place you on that report right now. Okay. Let me, let me put in what I got and I'll Okay. So I'm just, you know, spinning my wheels. This is just painful, and I'm not getting anywhere doing this calling for six years. Yes. Okay, so I'm sorry for that delay. I was going through a few things behind the scenes that were getting to me to see where we are all full, and I'm so sorry that I have to do this to you. Yeah, I've been told that six years. So I'm this isn't sorry. working. I, I, I just need to use common sense and know that these calls are controlled, and I have not been able to get any accountability for these crimes, hacking of my devices, keeping me from help six years. So I don't know how many more calls I need to make before something is done and you guys be full six years in Canada in Alaska. I mean, it's ridiculous for me to keep trying, knowing that it's controlled. Okay, so I just have to do something else. Thank you. I'm so sorry. Have you tried going to, like, in person to a police department? I can try to do that. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, yes. Um, are you guys full? Um, what's, what's your name? Keanu Clark. Hi, just know your first name. All right, you have to know. Um, this is Domestic Violence Prevention. What? What's the name of this organization? Where are you located? 
So you need to know everything going on before you tell me if you that you're, you're full. Um, you, I was there before and I went to go report my, report my abuser and I was, my things, items were put outside in the box and I was wanting to know if I can come back and why you guys did that. You wouldn't give me the accompaniment that you gave other, give other women. And then when I went to go appoint, uh, report my abuser, you put my stuff out and put me out. And I've been calling to see why you guys did that and you never called, returned my calls. I asked you, I told, I said that for my abuser, I would need to go to the FBI. And you, you guys refused to do that. So I said, what about the police department? You refused to do that. So I went on my own and then came back and my stuff was outside in the box. That was, I believe, February of 2018. And I've been trying to call in all this time, trying to get answers and none was have been given. Because it seemed to me like my abuser was mad that I reported him and had you put my items out. And if I came there to flee him, why would you let him call you and put me out? Oh, I'm seeing the organization in general. I, I thought you would be appalled that the organization got uh, put me out when I left to report my abuser. I'm sorry. There's a disconnect. I thought you would be appalled. Because what organization would let an abuser control him? Or shelter. So we're on different pages. I'm just reporting that I don't know what to do because I, you guys wouldn't give me the services you offer other women and then put me out when I was reporting my abuser. This is from 2018. Yeah, I've been trying to get, um, you know, uh, answers all that time. No, I'm sorry, 2019, February 2019. No, I'm still going through the situation. I still keep getting put out and getting false arrest, taking apartments and um, places that I live and cars. I can't get anything because nothing's repetitively done. Each time I be, try to build my life back up, someone interrupts it and derails my life with no consequences. So I wanted to know if you were still full and then why you guys put me out when I left to report my abuser. Well, who uh, can you look in the notes and see if there's anyone? Any has there any, been anyone there that um, from a long time ago that long that worked there? Can you see if there's a foul? Because I would have got it resolved, but no one returned my calls. I'm not being heard. I'm homeless now, and I would like to come back, but I'd also like to know if my abuser was controlling you guys. And why is that why you put me out when I was gone reporting him? No, ma'am. I promise you, nobody's ever put me out to talk to your abuser. I, well, maybe you talk to the police department because I wasn't there. How can you put someone's stuff outside in a box when they're not even there? I couldn't have done anything wrong, gone. All I know is I left my things in the drawer and um, left my items there and I went to, you forced me to go alone with no support system and then came back and my stuff was outside in the box. And no one called me back the, uh, multiple times. I was trying to get um, information on why that was done or clarity. But I did say multiple times I am seeking shelter now. Because all he keeps doing is the same thing, repeating the pattern over and over because no one's had accountability. I'm still with my abuser. I mean, is that what you're saying? You said the cycle keeps, is that what you're talking he about? He gets me put out of places, ma'am. Like he got me put out of there when I was gone reporting him. Have you seen him recently? So it's meant to be stressful. He loves torment. That's his fetish, and he, from all different directions, it's nonstop. He does not stop. As many people he can enlist in it, that's what, as much as it'll happen over and over again. So, ma'am, I don't know what you're seeking. I just told you multiple times I'm seeking shelter. I called you. Okay, you want me to give you their numbers and try to see if they can help you? I 
I call you and ask you if I can get shelter there. You're denying it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. What's your name? My name is Mandy. Why are you denying it, Mandy? What? Why are you denying the shelter there? No, I, I, it, I have to come to some sense to know that you are. if you haven't had room six years, you're not going to have it. Okay, thank you. Operator M985, what's the location you're calling about? Um, 2400 Cypress Street. 2400 Cypress Street? Yes. At the night shelter? Yes. And what's going on? Yeah, I have been black blacklisted and railroaded and deprived shelter for years, and I thought um, that is something that... Um, that is investigated by the FBI could be mistaken when someone um, is depriving a um, citizen of housing in the conspiracy. Okay. So I don't know what to do because I'm blacklisted from shelters and it's controlled. So I would get um, very little assistance if they do let me in. So I'm, I'm told that I am being discharged from the shelter for missing an appointment that they reschedule for other people. So I don't know where to go because I, I have a wealthy abuser that has been railroading me. There's been hit and runs, cars fed up like he was going to hit someone yesterday. You guys never came. And then you lost the car last night. Okay. I don't know what to do. Can I go to the police department and try to... I didn't hear you. I was talking. Yes, I'm look. I'm fleeing a domestic violence crisis that's serious, because the car sped up like it was gonna deliberately hit one of my friends the other day, and they've done it to me multiple times, on camera footage. And then my son actually got hit with a car, but the injuries were minor. All right. If you were a victim, uh, I can give you the phone number to our victims assistance office. Okay. Can I come in and get placed up there? Okay, what's the number? 817-392-4390. Okay, thank you. Yes, I am uh, scared. Um, I had to endure years of um, schemes to keep me from shelter, and I get terrorized daily, and my phone's been hacked, and I'm in a domestic violence crisis, and I just don't, oh. I'm at my wit's end, I don't know what to do. No. What did I call? An advocate. Um, it's going to be, so whenever you're a victim of a violent crime, um, your report goes to an advocate. Um, they can provide you with uh, additional information and link you to services. So let me see if uh, your case has actually gone to that level. Um, and let me figure it out with the advocate, maybe, okay? Okay. I'm speaking with Ms. Uh, Hobson, is that correct? I don't know who that is. I can't, I don't remember. What's her first okay. name? Uh, Shelby Hobson. Oh, I think that that was the one that told me to go to Presbyterian Night Shelter to flee for my life. Oh, no. Okay. So, let me, what I can do is I can give you, if you have her uh, contact information. I've already left like messages. She hasn't returned my calls. I, well, I can direct you to her because she's the one um, that's going to have to speak to you, okay? Why does don't she have to speak up. with me? Why does she have to speak with me? Her. Out of all people, why am I forced to speak with her? They referred me to Tip Presbyterian Night Shelter. Well, she's our supervisor here at the unit, and so I have directed... So there's a flag? Let me just make sure I understand. I'm just trying to get clarity. So there's a flag that I can only speak to someone that referred me to Presbyterian Night Shelter fleeing for my life. They put a flag enforcing that I get treated like that by Shelby. No, she referred me. She has, now that is not correct. These calls are like this all the time. It's like someone that needs to get felony should have got them a long time ago. I'm not being heard. I called, I called and Shelby got on the phone and they forced me to speak with Shelby and flag the account they claim. Because Shelby was rude. And Shelby said that I, she knew I recorded and I didn't even know her. I was calling randomly and Shelby knew about me recording and then lied when she got caught in that. Again, she's the, she's the one that's going to have more information on the case. 
I'm not being heard, ma'am. Shelby was not. A, It's deliberate. Detective Assistance Coordinator with the Forest Police Department. I am currently away from my desk. Please leave a message and I will return your call as soon as possible. If you need immediate assistance. Once again, this is Keanu Clark. Please return my call. This is how they set up the calls. It's taken a long time to pull this up. Yes. Um, I'd like to know um, if you have any space there. Keanu Clark. Just for me. You see my name in the system? You asked my, for my name and you didn't pull it up? Okay, because I came there, and the women were rude. I was panicking because I was getting gang stalked, and it was new to me. And then two women left the front desk when I was begging for help. Just left me up there, terrified. terrified. I, did, I was so scared. I did not know if I was going to get murdered. I was so, oh, so terrified. And for both of those women to ignore me and leave the front desk when I was terrified for my life. But you know what? A lot of people have turned a blind eye for years before COVID. Uh, when did this happen? That happened, I believe it was Mar um, t February or March of 2018, 2019. So I stopped coming because they used to be psychologically abusive all the time. They had counseling and wouldn't let me go. They said I had to do some kind of work or earn my way to go to camp get the counseling. The lady, she called, uh, she's probably still there if you can pull up my information. Because that someone said that they saw the foul not too long ago. I'm blacklisted from 30, 40 shelters, railroad, and they can't get in them. You know, that's devastating. And then ones that I accidentally got in using fake names or whatever. Then their schemes to put me out of those, like the car sped up like it was going to hit me at the family place, and they put me out over it on the streets for a car speeding up like it was going to hit me on their camera footage. And it happened to my friend, too. And then I'm getting put out here. It's a pattern. I got put out of the family place when it happened to hear, uh, me at the family place, and now I'm getting put out with, since it happened to my friend here. It's confidential. I, I want to know if you had space there. And if you can do anything to help me. Hotel rooms or anything. If you're full, you guys used to put in a place of the lady in a hotel room or find her a safe environment. Now for six years, you just sit in it and never get help. What do you do? Six years, we're full. Six years security. Six years handcuffed and arrested for attending a domestic violence support group, ignored year after year. Just keep taking it year, day after day, weeks, years. Still can't see my kids. Psycho abuser that runs the government. Just let him do it. He's rich. Let him run the government to the ground. Nothing repetitively done over and over. There's no one I can call on this planet. I've tried. I can't call family. I can't call the police. Can't call the FBI. I've already sent a message to the lady, the leader at church, and they're told to ignore me. It's for the scene. He's controlling it all. So he likes for me to get ignored and violated. So when you're panicking, I know you're going to be panicking because I put you out again. And then I'm going to, all the people that you run to escape me, I'm controlling them. So I'm going to use them to hurt you like he's been doing six years. Absolutely no accountability. 
ma'am, I, I don't know because it's devastating to make these calls year after year and get the same thing. And no, for six years, I've had my own apartment schemes at my job to make me lose that. It's just impossible. It's going to have to take someone else other than me to see that this is disturbing for something to be done. Someone else needs to care about this insanity for it to end. And that's what I'm hoping people will do. Okay, ma'am, I, I don't I just have to take it like I've had to do six years. Every word has been full six years. All victims advocates cover for crimes and churches. Nothing repetitively done. It just upsets me to keep calling and get the same games going nowhere. This hamster wheel. I mean, it, how, uh, what else could they be but identity thieves? Running all this, doing all this damage for identity thieves. Okay, ma'am. What did I call? What did I call? Um, what did you call? Yes, you guys never know. You know, it's pretty self-explanatory. What did I call? What are you? What are these types of crimes again? The what? It's these types of crimes again. Okay, thank you. Need my number? No, ma'am. I'm sorry. I'm, I was talking to one again. Oh, okay. Yes, I had got um, a call from someone saying that she needs to speak with her supervisor because I signed up to be on the program. And she never called back, and this is a pattern for people dangling okay. services, and I never get them, and I'm trying to see why this has happened years. Okay, let me transfer you. Okay. Deanna Clark, please contact me back at phone number. The Methodist Church, this is Annie. I'll record my calls, ma'am. Yes, I'm in a domestic violence crisis, and I'm scared, ma'am. For years, the government has kept me from being at locations, scheming to put me out of shelters and all kinds of things. And the car sped up like he was going to hit my friend, and I got put out to shelter. Basically, they discharged me. I missed an appointment, had the wrong appointment time, but a lot of other people are able to schedule, reschedule their appointments. But the location put me out. So is there anything that the church could do to help me, any kind of assistance or aid or anything? I'm so sorry to hear that. Well, we do actually have a helping hand line that I will send you to, and you can leave a message with all of your information, and they can help you out with your utility bill. Okay, but they, they don't, they can't help anyone in domestic violence crisis. I don't have a utility bill. There isn't anything beyond that that we currently have set up. Okay, churches used to help any way that they could. They all stopped I'm when so I got sorry, in my we crisis. We don't have anything else set up at this time. But would you like me to forward you to help helping hands hotline? Well, are they the going to pay a bill? you can try is, um, have you called 211? I did, but I just, okay. um. Uh, it hung up, so I just left it alone. Okay. Well, yeah, I would try two on one, or I can certainly forward you to the Helping Hands hotline, but that's going to be for you. Yeah, all out. churches stopped, and some of them are abusive. I, I mean. Oh, sorry, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. You've reached the Salvation Army of Tyler, Texas. Yes, I have some questions, and I'd like to know uh, if you have any space. Um, I came there. And the police, they were uh, played games with housing a long time. And I had a, suffered a lot of abuse. This is Salvation Army Tyler. You there? This, you sound familiar. Is this Salvation Army Tyler? Oh, yes, <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I don't think that you were the... Yeah, I, you, I think you were there when I stayed there. You've been there a while, huh? Oh, yes, ma'am. 45 years. Okay. Yeah, I think you're one of the ones that... So I came, I stayed there, and the police came and interrupted me getting housing. The lady played games for a long time, and finally he was going to give me housing. Uh, she was going to give me housing, but the police department came and forced uh, me to leave. Okay. So uh, what? Um, uh, what's the other lady's uh, name that's over there? I can't think of her name. I'm going to let you speak to my supervisor. Her name is in this night job. Okay. Okay. Forwarded. Please hold. Sorry, I think I remember you. I'm not sure though. Um, I stayed there a while back, and um, I I had a lot of issues with getting housing, and then finally the lady said that she was going to give me housing, and the police department came. 
And I never was never told why they forced me to leave and take all my stuff. And basically I got put out. I'm sorry, ma'am. Who are you? What is your name? It's Kiana, K-E-Y-A-N-A. I think I remember Brenda. Clark, C-L-A-R-K. So the one of the appointments, they had an emergency in the middle of my appointment and said they had to leave. And then I had issues with having appointments and getting housing and other people were getting housing but me. And then when she finally said that she was going to get the get, get me set up for housing, the police came and put me out. Made me get all my stuff. That's now I believe that they're happened. working behind the scenes because they used to come personally and put me out and help. I think that they're committing crimes. They're being their minions for my abuser. So what should, was that you? How can I help you today? Yes, I'd like to know if you remember that. I do not. Okay, is there's Nicole there? We don't have a Nicole here. It was um she wore one of those Salvation Army suits, like no, the uniform. Okay. Well, it was another girl that was over, uh, was a case manager and answered the phone and put people in, uh, to the shelter. What was her name? It's a, it, I don't think it was you. You don't sound familiar. What's the other name, la, lady name her. that does shelter placement? We don't really have a person who does shelter placement. Like you just kind of come and fill out the paperwork and check in. Okay, because I uh, what the strange experiences that I had there was a lady came at me with a hammer, for, and I didn't do anything. But I had a lot of unusual experiences like this at shelters, and they did they didn't give any consequences for this lady coming at me with a, sh a hammer, and I I did I was on my headphones. Then a lady that was sweeping that was I think that you had um, people staff that cleaned, and she came at me with a broom on your camera footage. So I've been getting terrorized at a lot, of, a lot of locations that's been under the radar. So let me, let's get back to Brenda. Let me get back to Brenda. She said I'm going to have to speak with her supervisor, but if you don't remember it, maybe she does. How long well, you been there? What are you needing help with? I wanted to know why the police department came and forced me to leave. Because now I keep getting put out on, uh, behind the scenes under the radar. But they used to come in person, and I'm trying to figure it out. Why do I keep getting put out places I'm left seeing, and right and no, nothing has been done about it? I am seeing in your file is that you were reported upsetting staff and clients in administration and lodge, um, complained that the elevator being down was directly affecting her life, police officers with the situation. Showed signs of mental health related issues, was asked to leave the center, started making threats to the police. That's a blatant lie. There's a lot well, of blatant lies in systems. That's what's in your record, so I, I that is a blatant I lie. I did not make the police came on their own and they're putting crimes off in a lot of different records. No, the, they you, had, you should have camera footage. The police came there on their own and fraud, put fraud and lies off in records so they're not held accountable. And this shows sign of mental illness. I don't know how many patterns equal an arrest before something's done. So why did they call the, why did the police come anyway? What was the sign of mental illness? It doesn't say all, but I'm just reading you what's in your notes. Yeah, it was weird that the um I had just bought a new um fax machine and I was doing doing a campaign and faxing all over the place and copying papers, and then time I bought it, the elevator went down. But I, I the lady was on camera was coming at me with a hammer. I don't understand why if uh, the, the people don't understand that those that's serious and then want to sl uh, slander them with mental illness so people can violate me like that with a, coming at me to work with a hammer. On camera footage. Then another one came with uh, came at me with a broom. So to cover for all that insanity, they're lying and saying I saw it show, showed signs of mental illness. So there's no accountability for their criminal offenses. 
repetitively over and over again. No, that's not true, ma'am. The police department came on their own, forced me to leave, and then wouldn't even let me get all my clothes. Every time I start fixing myself up and doing something with my life, it's always interrupted and nothing's done. And that's what they did there, came there on their own and forced me to leave so I wouldn't get that housing. Let me call the police department. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yes, I have questions about experiences I had. I made multiple different reports. And I'd like to know... What was the question about? I, ha I made multiple different reports and I have questions regarding them. Okay, one moment. Let me call the police department. So I started to get the gym membership and I started to get out when I had my apartment. Same thing schemes to keep make me lose my job so I called around and I tried to get on rental assistance and do everything I possible to keep my uh, apartment and then they conned the foster rest to take my car and apartment they've done it multiple different times everything I have starting over yeah, over uh, and over yeah, again now I can give you my name okay what is that yes yeah, so one time the police department came to Salvation Army and I did a complaint um, a CPS worker would call me routinely multiple different times a day, degrade me, yell at me through the phone, and terrorize me. And I recorded the calls, and I um, it should be in the file. His name is Zapata, or C something with a Z. Then I reported multiple different locations that I went were scheming so I couldn't get services. So nothing had happened at this place. that It's a computer. I can't remember the name of it, but they have computers. You take shower. You can wash. And they blatantly lied on me and then told me not to come back. And I reported it to the police because you can see on the cameras that they were blatantly lying. So I couldn't be there. Then something had happened at Salvation Army on blatant lies. So I was reporting to the police all this insanity that I experienced. And then he gave me a criminal trespass when the CPS worker got caught in lies from the police department. I was terrified. I'm sorry. When did all this happen? You see the you see my name. You don't see any reports. With my name? Okay, all, all the things I see are from 2019. That's correct. Okay, so and what, what's going on? You're calling about it five years later? I'm just trying to put pieces together on why the police department interrupted me trying to get housing and why they interrupted me at New Beginnings in Garland and in Plano. Why I was assaulted and arrested for attending a domestic violence support group. Why was I arrested at the Texas Rangers reporting my abuse and in Dangerfield? Reporting identity theft. So I'm just trying to get a common ground. So, oh, who's the detective? Yeah, it was probably Zapata. You said him. Is that his name, Zapata? Yes, we have someone here by that name. Okay, can you look in the files? You have it in front of you from 2019, right? Can you look in the files and see his name since you have it up? Is that can is can that be done? Which, from which case? It's uh, do you see anyone's name that starts with a Z? Yes, Zapata. Okay, okay. So when the police came and interrupted me getting housing at Salvation Army and forced me to leave and I couldn't you would not let me get out. I'm not being heard, sir. Can I finish? Forcing me to yeah, leave, no, I'm, I'm forcing me to leave, leave and would not let me get out my clothes. You're not what? I wouldn't, be, I, I wouldn't be able to answer any questions because I, I don't know what was going on. Oh, I'm just telling if I'm making reports, they don't say, and it's supposed to say what I'm reporting? Okay, it does, but I can't get in those reports. I can see who the detective is. Okay, who's the detective and why no one ever called me on all those reports? Because if two places would lie on me, why would businesses lie on me and scheme so I couldn't get services? Oh, I'm calling the police department. Well, doing that in conspiracy is a felony. It's a crime. I think there's a disconnect. This criminal, the scheme to deprive someone of services in the conspiracy. You didn't know that? Yes, I did. Oh, okay. What's your name? My name's Gary. 
Okay, do you see where the police came to Salvation Army? I see where they were talking to you, yes. Okay, and what happened? Um, I'm not 100% sure. You said you see where they were talking to me, but you can't see? I can see the reports where we went out there at the different locations. Okay, what locations did you go to? Now, it looks like Salvation Army is one of them. Okay. What's the other ones? I, I don't know why you were changing the subject. I'd like to know what you what other locations you show. Okay, all I'm showing is the Salvation Army. Okay, what about when I was at the, uh, ho- um, what was the name of that? I was at a hotel, and when I pulled out my facts, the uh, hotel person um, was calling me and harassing me before checkout. There was a pattern. I'm not. I'm not able to complete my sentences. I'm not able to complete my sentences. I pulled out the facts. I had bought a brand new fax. I pulled out the facts, and the man from the hotel kept calling me, like he knew I had. I, I'm not able to complete my. I don't know why you're interrupting, sir. This is vital. Please don't interrupt. This is my life. I know. I just want to be able to communicate and tell you what happened. Can you please be, not interrupt me, please? I'm in a clean and domestic violence crisis. So I pulled out the facts, and the man from the uh, hotel kept calling me, harassing me before checkout. That's been done multiple different times. In addition to that, they've schemed to, that I, to keep me from coming back to the hotel. They did it at uh, Motel, not Red Roof Inn. So anyway, the police came, and I said I told the man that I wanted to extend my stay, and he said that I had to get out of that room right then, there. Somebody had already rented the room. How? And I'm in it. So I think that someone saw me, illegally was monitoring me, saw me pull out that fax, and then had that man from the hotel terrorize me. I did a report. Did you guys ever investigate it? Why did he want me to get out that room before checkout when I pulled that fax out? If you guys would have investigated that, that would have been shown, that would have shown evidence I was being illegally monitored. But you wouldn't investigate it. And now you can't find it. What about the couple of the two locations that were scheming so I couldn't get services in that church in Tyler? All these police departments are falling through the cracks with over 100 or so reports of the same criminal activity over and over again. And then they slander me so they don't get the felonies they wrecked up for themselves. I've already done it. I've already done it. That's what I'm calling to see what happened. I just wanted to know what happened because I'm trying to put the pieces together on why police departments cover up for crimes and enlist okay, civilians in criminal activity. Okay, well, can you do that? Okay. One moment. okay. Brian Bowman, it's not I've already, I've talked to him before. Hello, I did a complaint with you and you said you received it, but you never gave me a follow-up for the complaint. It was years ago. My name is Kiana Clark, K-E-Y-A-N-A, Clark, C-L-A-R-K. I reported police misconduct. I reported the criminal trespass given to me at the police department when the CPS worker got caught in lies. I reported that a police, I was trying to report that I was being stopped at uh, Panda Express, and I called the police at Panda Express, and they had, the police department had Panda Express staff give me a criminal trespass. I also reported that multiple businesses were scheming, so I couldn't get services. And uh, I have not had a follow-up for those reports. I also reported that there were crimes to keep me away from my son, because since I lived in Tyler, and my daughter, and nothing has been done. So I'm just trying to see why police, the, the police department didn't give me direction, and in fact, then in fact gave me a criminal trespass from the police department, since I was getting terrorized, I went to another police department, and they said the uh, criminal trespasses extends to all Tyler police departments. So why if a woman's fleeing an abuse, would you give her a criminal trespass from a police department? And I, when I reported that misconduct to you, I did not get my call returned. So hopefully you'll return it this call, because I haven't received calls uh, from the past messages I left. My number is, you know, today there's not tears, but... Just, you know, I, inability to get therapy, support systems from church, family. It's, it's really heartbreaking. 
And don't you misunderstand, I did cry, I had meltdowns. I beg for therapy, please, if you guys have to torture me, please let me get therapy and they will not, they will not. They have the power to abuse, so they abuse it. So I'll try to upload these videos. I don't know how long it will take. I, I just, I, something has to give. It's not working on my phone. It's on lockdown. They're spoofing my calls and corruption, and I'm not, I don't believe I'm calling the real people. So I had a roommate that had a bed note on her bed for the same kind of meeting, and I know she rescheduled it. I know for a fact. So I know that they're railroading me and scheming to put me out. Twenty-four hundred Cypress Street. Twenty-four hundred Cypress Street. Yes. Yes, yeah, so I um, reported the other day that a car sped up like it was going to hit my friend, deliberately, okay. and I called uh, last night and they didn't see the call. And I called around seven something this morning, and the police never showed. But here's a curious thing: um, a car sped up like it was going to hit me at the family place in a safe location on their camera footage and the show police came and escorted me off property and then um, forced me to go to the bridge where I couldn't get shelter. They didn't follow protocol and it was on camera footage. They didn't follow protocol and put me in a safe place. In addition to that, the, the I just got put out of this location. They claimed because I uh, missed the appointment, but they rescheduled other people's appointments, but they're putting me out because I missed mine. So I think it's a pattern. Is this the police department? Yes, ma'am. Okay, well, what are you supposed to do when the car speeds up like it hits someone? And then the shelters put them out and punish them over getting violated. What are you guys supposed um, to do? Are you still at the shelter right now? Yes, the poli I've called last night. You lost that, phone, that, that call and didn't know I called. Then this morning at 7-something, and you still haven't came. And I just don't understand why I would get put out when I'm getting violated. Why would the police remove me on camera footage at the family place? Okay. And the person that you said tried to run you over, do you know who this person is? Yeah, it's this man that I met online that I believe is doing it. He's a he's like a someone from a horror movie that's able to control the government and just okay. completely derailed my life and have had no consequences. I've got put out of multiple different places, gone for getting uh, threatened, for asking for a cookie in the food line, and then they degraded me. They uh, When uh, I got put out, they dragged my stuff out, talked trash to me like a scorned um, ex or something, and they humiliated me in front of a lot of people when they put me out. Okay. Um, they put me out at the okay. bridge multiple different times and schemes. They put me out for someone lying on me, saying, I mean, they didn't even have their lie together. They put me out for reporting harassment, put me out okay. for a theft. I, I reported a theft, and they put me out. When I try to get services at the bridge, they push and shove me security and force me to leave. I also got pushed and shoved at the stew pot by police trying to get services on camera footage. I wasn't recording Did events then, me? so they were out of control. Police department would come personally and remove me in corruption. Mm -hmm. But now they're hiding behind the scenes and listing organizations and businesses to keep me from services and to put me out. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your last name? And the Fountain of Living Word um, let me stay on their property in a tent because I was blacklisted from all shelter and um, blatant lies and schemes in Dallas, and I didn't know where to go. So the Fountain of Living Word let me live on their property, but they had one rule that I could not discuss my abuse with anyone, and they were very psychologically abusive. I even saw a poisonous snake on their property. They schemed to put me out and blatantly lied on me. So I'm not trying, I'm, I don't understand why the police department won't investigate all these lies that are proven on cameras all over the place. Back 
I just haven't been able to get in law enforcement for a lot of amazing events and no consequences for t- the torture campaign I've had to endure. I still it's still not addressed that for years places have scammed, scammed that put me out and deprived me of services in a conspiracy, which is a felony charge that has yet to be addressed. So now I'm put out again for reporting abuse. Churches would blatantly lie on me and then tell me not to come back, making sure I never got a support system. I've already reported this multiple times and an investigator never calls. Period. I don't, I'm not being heard, ma'am. This isn't working for six years, ma'am. This is not working. No one's investigating this report, these reports. What, how much, how much longer do I have to endure this? We, I've already made 20 reports that were ignored. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Bye-bye. It's frustrating. So, nothing. So, he told me through fake pages. Uh, he said that, you know, um, he, uh, he can just buy. Basically, he's just saying that he can buy off the problem. And I was like, no, not everyone is that corrupt. You just can't buy this away. And he said, everyone has a price. And it looks to me like he's right because it has not stopped. If you can have a bank and the police department cover up for your theft, that's a, he's right. It, obviously, everyone does have a price. If you can steal food stamps and then they Health and Human Services and the police department covers for it, If you can steal Social Security and then close the whole building down so no one gets their felonies. If you can steal Attorney General child support, put them on hold and hide $5,800 and then another time $3,000 to keep me in emotional distress and then deprive me of any ability to report it. He's right. Everyone does have a price. If you can put someone out of a domestic violence organization for trying to flee you while that party's gone, everyone has a party. If you can have someone's kids hang up in their face in tears and start arguments with their um, desperate parent, if you can send someone to a shelter and to come at someone with someone with a hammer so they can live in uh, constant fear and nothing done, so at the time, I didn't think anyone was, it was possible for someone to send someone to shelters and someone's environment to terrorize them. But it kept happening. So I realized that it was planned. She was an overnight. Yes, for missing an appointment. I thought it was at one, but what? it was at 10. Yeah. For one? Yeah, okay, yeah. They can't, there's yeah, something else supposed going to be on. three. Huh? Yeah, you're supposed to, you, yeah. And then you miss three. three. I missed three. two. I can't miss one. Right. Did they reschedule it? Yeah, each time. Oh, yeah, uh, that's not right. Yeah, that's, that's, and that's just no, it's um, Venus. Venus. I, so I missed the appointment. I told her that the car sped up like it was a hit, Patricia. And I and they get But I didn't miss a payment. I just missed an appointment. I missed. I missed an appointment that I left a notice. I wrote on this letter and shoved it under the door. Well, normally other people can't schedule it. You get the wrong time. Well, I mean, like I said, I wrote it was on a. Friday. That's, that's crazy. Friday. That's not right. Yeah. I, every, right. Something's wrong. Who's your case manager? Venus, but I mean, who hasn't what missed an appointment and rescheduled? Well, the appointment is not, that's not it. There's got to be something. There's there. something else going on. Yep. You need to nail it down. Yeah. I know. There's something else going on. I haven't been able to yeah. nail it down years. Yeah. No, that's what they're claiming. But my abuser has controlled a lot of environments. I think he had them do this, put me out in Malibu. What now? They, basically, they're making me an overnight, and you know that's not always guaranteed. You have to do that every single day. What now? My abuser controls environments. Your what? Abuser. Uh-huh. I think that that's what happened. He got mad, and he, that's, he had them use that reason to put me out. Dude. It's crazy. Okay. But, I mean, how, how many people do you know that got put out from this appointment? Not, not, now, that happened to Lynn, but she put more than one. And they always say three. Yeah. So you need to nail that down. That's not right. 
you need to go nail that down. That's not right. Something's going on. There's yeah, I know. Something's going on. There's more to this. I promise. I know. Right here. Supervising and enforcing crimes. Absolutely no accountability. Can't even use my devices. I have to go to Wi Fi to upload videos. Just how completely hijacked my video, I mean, my um, devices for years. Absolutely nothing done. So, what I think is going on, the government's abusing power and railroading me into the environments they can control. If the environment does not want to correct up the felony, then they say that they're full and they can't let me in. I'm only allowed to stay in controlled environments. And then when they get mad, I'm put out on a whim. Yes, okay, I came there a while back and the police department came and removed me, trying to get help. And I have never, I went to internal affairs immediately after that and tried to speak with the victim's advocate and she wouldn't help. She said she couldn't place me in a safe environment after you guys refused to help. I'm curious on why you did not help. And I believe I came, uh, I came again in 2022. I don't know the exact month. It may have been January or February and you wouldn't help again. They played games. They said that they were going to help at first. And then they, she ducked and dodged me weeks and then told me she couldn't help. And they denied me therapy too for trauma. I'm sorry. Well, why don't you take my information? I can't hear you. Can you speak up? I'm at a bus station. It's a lot of background noise. Okay, well, is this is the emergency line. I like I need shelter. And I have it's about it's been impossible for me to get it. I don't understand what you mean. My needs are out of your control. Are you sure this is Hope's door? You're not making sense. This is an emergency crisis hotline. What do you mean, my needs? What did you say about my needs? And there's no one at the office can that can look at my file. These meetings all over the place. I'm sorry, my calls aren't returned, ma'am. Can you transfer me to the emergency crisis hotline since this isn't it? Um, yeah, sure. it, it sounds like as if it's almost say scammers and people scheming so I don't get service. That's what it almost feels like. And thinking up anything that they can think of to keep me from services. Well, the problem with that, doing that in the conspiracy is a felony. Okay, the emergency crisis hotline. You there? She hung up. She hung up. Oh, no, she's still here. Hello? I don't know what's going on. Four minutes, 29 seconds. No one's saying anything. I don't know what's going on. found the number on my own. I didn't know what was going on with that call. She wasn't responding. There's a lot of numbers that are not answering the phone. It's not an accident. Each time they put me out, they railroaded me and blacklisted me from all shelters. So this is something that I've had to endure years. I just got tired of it and just got a tent. I repentively not heard. Hello, my name is Kiana Clark. Please return my call. 452109645.